American dream is what my grandfather did in 1901. He left his home country of British Honduras, knew no one, worked his way over on a banana boat, 17 years old, got an education, raised a family, and now I'm offsprings of that story. I'm a firm believer. We're never too old to go for a dream. I grew up in Chicago and I remember the turbulent 60s a lot, but you just kind of roll with the punches and live with it. Nobody was wealthy. I mean, it was just a regular middle-class African-American neighborhood. I watched the older boys take their drafting boards and they would go to the high school and they were taking drafting classes. That's when I decided I wanted to be an architect. I didn't really know what an architect was. I just wanted to do like the older guys and draw buildings. My dad started working at the University of Michigan. Moving to Ann Arbor was very, very helpful for me because it showed me a different part of life that was important. I went from an all-black environment and then I moved to an all-white environment. And I got a chance to learn very quickly that we really were all the same and it really gave me confidence that I could do anything. My parents really helped me see the value of education. My mother has her master's and she was a teacher and became an administrator. My dad has his PhD and he became an administrator and a vice provost. I came to Morehouse College, which was a great opportunity. And then from Morehouse, I went to Howard University and got my degree in architecture. I started work with Bechtel Power Corporation as an architect and decided to move to Atlanta. And I left a great job. My wife left a great job. Two months after I starting that job, that company went bankrupt. That was the longest drive home in my life. I had only been married nine months at the time. My wife really didn't want to move to Atlanta. I told my wife this was great and leaving great jobs wouldn't be a problem. And two months later, I don't have a job. And I always tell people what was my worst day became my best day. Because with that job going bankrupt, it was a struggle. We, uh, we went from doing real well to being broke. I had to pick myself up and I had to keep going. I had no idea where I was headed now. I just knew I had to have a job. Uh, I knew I had to figure something out. And after four years of doing that, I finally decided to go in business for myself. We were so broke. My wife and I said, what the heck, let's go for it. 28 years later, we've built an incredible company. We've had an incredible journey. My company is C.D. Moody Construction Company. And we're a full service general contractor, commercial contractor. We've done some really neat projects in Atlanta. We did Turner Field, the Olympic Stadiums. We've done a number of schools, parking decks. Right now we're working on the Atlanta History Center, renovation in addition. We've done some pretty exciting stuff. Success for me has changed with age. Success in my 20s was getting a job and marrying the right lady. Success in my 30s was hoping my kids were going to be happy. Success in my 40s was hoping the business hangs in there. So here's all the finishes you got going. People often ask me, are you a millionaire and stuff like that? This is what I tell people. My wife and I have worked extremely hard. We've done extremely well. But we don't worry about numbers as much as what are we doing to make a difference? Yes, we're successful. Yes, we've done well financially. But one thing I can tell you, it could be gone tomorrow. All it takes is a bad project, a bad investment. My wife and I, we're more focused on if we had nothing tomorrow, would people still want to be around us because of who we are or what we have? To me, that's what we look at for success, is do people feel better after being around us or worse? So here's the thing you gotta remember about construction. Nobody out there building it is a rocket scientist, okay? Everybody out there- Do I think all Americans have the same opportunity to succeed? It's kind of hard to believe you can succeed when you don't have hope. You know, even though my wife and I struggled and my parents came up poor, they always had hope. I never really knew any big business people who looked like me. And that's one reason I also try and do a lot of speaking because I want 
other kids of all races and religions to see the great things we all can do. Um, and I still believe America is one of the countries that you really can um, do some incredible things and start from nothing. Do I think we all had the same opportunity? Yes, but there is a big part that goes with that, is do you even believe you can be successful? Do you have people around you who are telling you you can be successful? Do you see things that make you believe you can be successful? As long as you got hope, you get up in the morning, don't you? Y'all come here every day because of what? Hope on getting what? A job. Now, there is somebody out there that can change that person's life and instill that potential for hope. And once you touch and grab hope, boy, you're something. You can do some incredible stuff. The American dream, to me, is not that you're successful, but generations to come have a desire and opportunity to be successful. And it's what they do with it that matters. That's the American dream to me. What dreams do you chase? Share your dream at redreamproject.org. Redream is presented through the generous support of ThinkShift, an initiative of the DeBruce Foundation.